So now we're going to talk about the sorting algorithms that you have to be able to perform on the D1 exam. Um, we've got the bubble sort, shuttle sort, the quick sort, the shell sort, and then you might also get asked um, to be able to identify which sort has been performed. So we'll talk a little bit about the characteristics of each sort. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to quickly do the bubble sort and go through how the algorithm works and what sort of questions you might get asked. I'll do the same for the shuttle sort, quick sort, and shell sort. And as I go through, I'll talk about the characteristics. So firstly, let's have a look at how the bubble sort works. What we want to do is, as we go through the algorithm, we want to keep a note, and this is the same for all the algorithms, really, of the number of passes we have to do the number of comparisons we have to make between numbers and the number of swaps. So I'm going to keep a table going at the side for passes, comparisons and swaps. I'll keep that there. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the first pass on the bubble sort and I'm going to go through it in quite some detail and then I'll show you how you can sort of speed up the notation and setting out. Okay. And the bubble sort works like this. You give them some numbers and you want to sort them into the right order and you do this by an algorithm, so it's a sort of algorithm a computer might use. So you can't just look at it and write it out in order. We're going to write out the numbers that we're given and the order that we're giving them in. And the bubble sort works like this. We're going to compare these first two numbers. And I'm going to ask the question, is 7 bigger than 5? And if 7 is bigger than 5, then we're going to swap them. So that's a comparison and the swap. So this is the first pass and I'm comparing 7 and 5 so it's one comparison and it's going to be one swap. Okay. And then what I do is I write out the new list and now I'm going to compare 7 with 2 and I ask the question is 7 bigger than 2 and if it is swap it. So I'm comparing 7 and 2 and yes I'm going to swap it because 7 is bigger than 2. So write it out again. This time the two goes there. Six. Okay. And then I'm going to compare seven with four and ask the question again, is seven bigger than four? Well, that's a comparison. And it's going to get swapped as well. So swap it and I'll write it out again. Now I'm going to compare seven with nine and ask the question, is seven bigger than nine? Well, this time 7 isn't bigger than 9, so I'm not going to swap it. But I've still compared the two. So I'm going to add 1 to my comparisons, but I don't need to add 1 to the swap tally because I've not swapped them. So I'll write out the list again. 4, 7, 9, 1, 3, and 6. And this time I'm going to compare 9 with 1 and ask the question, is 9 bigger than 1? It is. I've compared them and I'm going to swap them. So I've got 5, 2, 4, 7, 1, and 9. I'm now going to compare 9 with 3. I'm going to swap them as well. I'm going to write out the list again. And finally compare 9 with 6. Compare and swap. So one more compare, one more swap. And then I'm going to write out the list. 5, 2, 4, 7, 1, 3, 6, and 9. Now that is just one pass that has been performed. And you'll notice it's not now in the right order, but there is one number that is definitely in the right place, and that's 9. And what the bubble sort does, and the reason it's called the bubble sort is it takes the biggest number and moves it to the end and just like bubbles rise in a drink so the biggest number rises to the end of the list and that happens at the end of every pass so we've done one pass and the number nine the biggest number in the list has gone to the end so this number nine is now in the right place so i can underline it okay so that's one characteristic of the bubble sort at the end of each pass the biggest number goes to the end another characteristic is the number of comparisons, you'll see I compared 7, 5, 7 and 2, and I look at the number of comparisons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 comparisons on this first pass, and there are 8 numbers. 7 comparisons, 8 numbers. Okay. Uh, 
in each pass, the number of comparisons is going to go down by one. On the next pass, I know nine's in the right place. So I've only got now seven numbers to compare. And again, I'll go down like this, and I'll do six comparisons, okay? Um, depending on the number of swaps on the side, okay? So now I'm going to do the second pass. And the second pass is in exact, done exactly the same way, except I don't know how to compare this nine at the end because I already know it's in the right place. So what I'm going to do is do the, a second pass, but I'm going to show you now how we, you might want to speed up the notation. Now you can set you, you work out exactly like this. It's a very good way of setting it out. It's very clear, um, but obviously it takes a lot of time. So I'll show you how we can just change that a little bit if you want to. So for the second pass, I'm going to write down the initial list we've got, and I know that nine's in the right place, and I'm going to go through the bubble sort again. Okay. So the second time I do the bubble sort, I'm just going to think about what I've got to do. I compare five with two, and there's going to be a swap, so two would go there. I would then be comparing five with four, so five would have moved here, and I'm going to swap again. I'm then going to compare 5 with 7, and they're not going to swap. So now I've got the 7, and I'm going to compare it with 1, and they would swap. I've got the 7, I would compare it with 3, and they would swap. 7 compared with 6, and they would swap. And then I've got the 7, and the 9's already in the right place. Okay, So that is me doing the, exactly the same thing again, but not drawing all these circles and things. Now, it's up to you whether you want to do it like that, or whether you want to do it like this. Okay, so that's the second pass done. So let's have a look if we can work out the comparisons and swaps. So this is the second pass. Well, how many comparisons are there? Well, there should be six. I've got seven numbers to compare because the nine's already done. So there should be six comparisons because I've compared five with two, and then I've compared five with four, then I've compared five with seven. So there should be six in total. So if we go straight up here and say six comparisons. How many swaps did I make? I swapped five with two. I swapped five with four, so that's two swaps. I didn't swap five with seven, but I did swap seven with one. I did swap seven with three. I did swap seven with six, and so that gives me five swaps. Like that. And I think we'll just do one more pass. So we'll do the third pass. I'll write out the uh, list that I finished with on the, at the end of the second pass. Seven and nine are now in the right place. And let's see. I would compare two with four, and there wouldn't be a swap. I would compare four with five, and there's not going to be a swap. I'd compare five with one, and they would definitely swap. Five with three would swap. Five with six wouldn't swap. Okay. So now I know that six is in the right place. I know that seven's in the right place. I know that nine's in the right place. I can come back up to my list. This is the third pass. There's going to be five comparisons because it's gone down by one. And let's have a look at the number of swaps. Two didn't swap with four. Four didn't swap with five, but five swapped with one and three. Okay, so there's going to be two swaps there. And it didn't swap with six. So just two swaps on that pass. Okay, and I think we will finish this off now. Let's have a look at the fourth pass. I'll write down what I finished with at the end of last time. And these are all in the right place. Okay. I'm going to compare two with four. There's no swap there. But one is definitely going to swap with four. And three is definitely going to swap with four. But it's not going to swap with five. So five, six, seven, and nine are in the right place. How many comparisons did I make? Well, oh. This is the fourth pass. I made four comparisons. How many swaps did I make? Well, um, four swap with one and three, but that was it. It's just two. Okay. And I'll just keep going through it like that and uh, until it's in order. The bubble sort, the main characteristics are that the biggest number goes to the end at the end of every pass. So the biggest number always goes to the end of every pass. And the number of comparisons goes down by one each time. Now, a question you might get asked is, if they were totally disorganized in, in, um, in a fashion that I had to um, keep swapping all the time, um, I might get asked the question, given eight numbers, 
what's the maximum number of swaps that I might have to do? Well, the maximum number of swaps is every time I compare them, I have to swap them. And I can find out how many times I have to compare them because if I've got eight numbers, there will be seven comparisons on the first pass, six on the next, five on the next, four on the next, three on the next, two on the next, and one on the one after that. And, if, and it would be a, a maximum number of swaps if each time there was a comparison there was a swap. So it would be the same number. The other thing you've got to be careful of is it might just happen that um, when I do the next pass, not on this question, but it might be that I've got to the fourth pass and I see here that I have one, two, three, four, and they're already in order. Just because you can see that they're in order, something you've finished with the um, algorithm. Okay, the computer wouldn't know that these are in order now. You have to proceed with the algorithm until the algorithm's finished. Okay, so just because you can perceive that the numbers are in the right order does not mean the algorithm's finished. Okay. Okay, we're going to have a look now at the shell sort. Uh, slightly different sorts, but again, we're going to keep a note of the number of passes, the comparisons, and the swaps. And the shell sort works a little bit like this. I'm going to write out the numbers to start with. And I'm going to compare um, these first two numbers. I'm going to compare 5 with 7. And I'm going to ask the question, if 5 is smaller than 7, I'm going to swap it. And notice how I say that. If 5 is smaller than 7, I'm going to swap it. If I have two 5s, 5 and 5, I would ask the question, is 5 smaller than 5? And it's not, so I wouldn't swap it. So if two numbers are the same, we don't swap but 5 is smaller than 7, so I swap. And I write out the list again. And that there is the first pass. A bit different from the bubble sort. That is pass 1. One comparison, because I compared 5 and 7, and I did swap. Okay, so one swap. On the second pass, I'm going to look at this number here, 2, and I'm going to compare it with 7. Okay? 2 um, is 2 smaller than 7. Yes, it is, so I swap. And then I ask the question, is 2 smaller than 5? And yes, it is a swap. So I'm going to get 2, 5, 7, 4, 9, 1, 3, 6. And I compared 2 with 7, and then I compared it with 5, and I swapped both times. So that was past 2, and I had 2 comparisons and 2 swaps. I'm now going to look at this number 4. I'm going to compare with 4 with 7. I'm going to say it's 4 smaller than 7. It is, so a swap. Then it's 4 smaller than 5. It is, so I swap. And then I compare 4 with 2, and it isn't smaller, so I don't swap. Now, I've made there, I've compared 4 with 7, 4 with 5, and 4 with 2. So I've made three comparisons, but I only swapped it twice. Okay. So I'll write out the list again. And now I'm going to look at this number 9. I'm going to say is 9 smaller than 4. It isn't. Sorry. So I'm going to write out the new list, which will be 2, 4, 5, 7, 9, 1, 3, and 6. And I'm going to compare now the 9 with the 7. So I compare 9 with 7, is it smaller? No. So I don't have to swap it. I just write the list out again. There was one comparison though, even though we didn't swap. Okay. I'm now going to compare the 1 with 9. I compare 1 with 9 and swap. I compare 1 with 7 and swap. 1 with 5 and swap. 1 with 4 and swap. 1 with 2 and swap. Okay. So my new list will be 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 9, 3, and 6. And let's just look at the comparisons and swaps there. On the fifth pass, one was compared with 9, 7, 5, 4, and 2. That's five comparisons, and they were all swaps. Okay. I'm now going to look at this number 3 and compare it with 9. 3 and 9 are swap. 3 and 7 are swap. 3 and 5 are swap, 
3 and 4 are swapped, and I can pair 3 with 2, but I don't swap. So here I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, and 9, and 6 is on the end. How many comparisons do I make? I compared 3 with 9, 7, 5, 4, and 2. So 5 comparisons. And how many swaps? I swapped 3 with 9, 7, 5, and 4. So just 4 swaps. And pass 7 is going to be the last pass. Well, I compare 6 with all these other numbers. 6 compared with 9 and swap. 6 compared with 7 and swap. 6 compared with 5 and no swap. Okay, so I compared 6 with 9, 7 and 5. 3 comparisons, but I only swapped it twice. Okay, and so the final list and the sorted list is that one. And we're done. Now, it looks a little bit easier than the bubble sort to sort out. Now, there's pros and cons to all of these sorts. The bubble sort is nice because it's easy to perform. And if I want to compare sorts, I'm going to talk about something called efficiency. Every time I compare two numbers and swap them, that is an operation on a computer. And it takes a little bit of time. So if I wanted to compare two sorts and see which one was the best for this particular situation, this particular bunch of numbers here, I would count up the number of comparisons and the number of swaps and I would total them and I would do the same for the bubble sort that we just done, comparisons and swaps, and whichever one would, had less comparisons and swaps would be the most efficient, because each time there's a comparison and a swap, that's a little bit of time. Okay, So the one with the least comparisons and swaps is the most efficient. Now efficiency depends on the order that you're given and also how many numbers you're given. Uh, and there's a great site to compare um, different algorithms, and I'll put a link up to that. So let's now look at the... Uh, let's first of all, I suppose before we move on, talk about the characteristics of the shell sort. The characteristics of the shell sort, where is the bubble sort, the biggest number came to the end, with the shell sort, you'll see first pass I just compare these two, and then just these three, and then just these four. And so this side of the... Um, sort here, this side, doesn't really get touched. These numbers don't change until the very end. And that's one thing to look out for for the shell sort. Only swaps happen down here in the first two, in the first three, in the first four. So now we're going to look at the quick sort. And the quick sort uh, works like this. Again, I'm going to keep an eye of passes, comparisons and swaps. this and I write out the list same numbers again okay and the way the quick sort works is I look at the number furthest on the left and I'm going to put a line underneath it because that's going to be a pivot number and that means I'm going to choose that number seven and any numbers that are less than seven are going to go to the left of seven and any numbers that are bigger than seven are going to go to the to the right okay so any numbers that are smaller than 7 go to the left. I have to make sure that when I move these numbers to the left, I don't change the order. So it's 5 smaller than 7, it is, so it goes here. It's 2 smaller than 7, it is, it goes here. It's 4 smaller than 7, it is. 9 is not bigger than 7, it's going to go to the right of 7. But 1 is smaller than 7, it's going to go there. 3 is smaller than 7, and 6 is smaller than 7. And then I'm going to put 7 there, and 9 is bigger than 7. Okay. So all the numbers that are smaller than 7 go to the left, and all the numbers that are bigger than 7 go to the right. And this number 7 now is now in the right place, so I'll put a box around it. Okay. So that was my first pass. I compared 7 with every number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there's 7 comparisons. And how many swaps? I swapped 7 with 5, 2, 4, 1, 3, and 6. So 3, uh, 6 swaps. Okay. And the next thing I do for the next pass is I choose some more pivots. I look where my block number is, and there might be more than one block number as we go through, and I underline the number furthest to the left in this set and furthest to the left in this set over here. And every time there's a gap of some numbers that aren't blocked, I underline the first number in that list. This is a list of six, and this is just a list of one number, but I still use it as a pivot. 
I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to use 5 as a pivot with these numbers, and I'm going to use 9 as a pivot with the numbers over here. Well, there's just 9, but there might be more in a different question. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Anything smaller than 5 goes to the left, but I keep the order in the right place. I was going to go there, and 6. And I compare 9 with all the numbers over here, and anything smaller than 9 goes to the left, but there's only 9. Okay. Now, 7 was already in the right place, 5 is now in the right place, and 9 is definitely in the right place. Let's just have a look at the comparisons and swaps. I compared 5 with 2, 4, 1, 3 and 6, so I made 5 comparisons with 5, and I compared 9 with nothing, so it was just 5 comparisons. How many swaps did I make? 1, 2, 3, 4. I swapped 5 with 4 numbers, and I didn't swap 9 with anything. I'm now going to pick this as a pivot, and this one as a pivot. Again, there's only one in this list, but there could be more. And anything smaller than 2 goes to the left. So I'm going to get 1, 2, and keep the order the same, 4 and 3, 5, 6, 7, and 9. Well, this is already boxed. This one's already boxed. This one's already boxed. 6 are compared with the numbers in this list, but there's only 6, so that's in the right place. And also 2 is now in the right place. Okay, let's just look at the comparisons and swaps for that pass. I compared 2 with 4, 1 and 3, so that's 3. And I compared 6 with nothing, so nothing. How many swaps did I make? I just swapped 2 with 1. Okay, and then I'm going to pick this as a pivot, and this is a pivot. I compare 1 with all the numbers in this list, there's only one, so one goes there. Two is already in the right place. Everything smaller than four goes to the left. Seven and nine. This was already in the right place, and this, and this, and this. Four is now in the right place, two was in the right place, and now one is in the right place. Let's just talk about my comparisons and swaps. I compared 1 with nothing, I compared 4 with just 3, so it's one comparison, and there was one swap. And now I'm on this last pass. You can stop here if you want, but I'll just make the point. This would be the next pivot, and I compare it with the numbers around it, but there's nothing to compare it with. So on the fifth pass, so on the fifth pass, there is no comparisons and no swaps, and 3 is now in the right place and boxed that's done and the numbers are in order and we can talk about the efficiency again by adding up the number of comparisons and swaps I can talk about the characteristics of the quick sort which is this one furthest on the left will always go somewhere into the list where all the numbers on the left are this side and all the numbers on the right are this side so you can look out for that if you're shown a, a sort that's been done if it's, a, if it's a quick sort that number furthest on the left should have moved and everything to the left should be smaller than it, and everything to the right should be the same size or bigger. We've got one more sort to look at, and that's the shell sort. And the shell sort works like this. You, it's basically the idea that you take the list and turn it into sub-lists that you sort and then put back together. And what you do is you count how many numbers are in your list, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and you take that number and you divide it by 2, so it's 8 divided by 2 is going to be 4, and that's how many sub-lists you're going to create. Okay. So I want four sublists, and to decide which numbers in each sublist, I'm going to go across the top and go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. And, I'm, and the ones are going to be in a sublist, so seven and nine, they're the ones. The twos are going to be in a sublist, the threes are going to be in a sublist, and the fours are going to be in a sublist. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort each sublist. So this is the first sublist, and I'm going to sort it. And the way you sort this is by using the shuttle sort. Now, the mark scheme will never check whether you use the shuttle sort or not. So what you've got to do is just put them in order. And if it asks you a question, you've got to remember that the way you sorted it was the shuttle sort. Okay? But it's not going to check. So all I'm going to do is swap these around. So if they need to change. So 7 is in the right place compared with 9, so they're going to stay where they are. 5 and 1 are going to swap. 2 and 3 are in the right place. 
and 4 and 6 are also in the right place and then I'm going to put the numbers back together so 7, 1, 2, 4, 9, 5, 3, 6 okay? and that's the first pass done and again I can talk about comparisons and swaps so let's do that here, that's pass 1 comparison swaps well pass one I compared seven with nine five and one two and three and four and six so there's four comparisons and I think I made one swap okay. and I got down to here now on pass two I take the number of subgroups that I had here I had four subgroups of two, and I'm going to half the number of subgroups. So I had four, now I'm going to have two. So this time I go across the top and I go one, two, one, two. It's a bit like eeny, meeny. And all the ones are going to be one group, and all the twos are going to be another group. So I'm going to write down the group of ones. I'm going to write down the group of twos. And again, I'm going to sort the ones using the shuttle sort and like I said before it's not going to check how you did that so I'm just going to write it in order 2, 3, 7 and 9 I'm going to sort this second group by the shuttle sort and again it's not going to check so I just put them in order and then I put the groups back together and that's the second pass done and just like I did for the second pass I'm now going to half the number of um, subgroups. I had two subgroups this time, so now I've got one group which is just that. I'm going to shuttle sort it and that just means put it in order because it's not going to check. Seven, I missed a nine out there. Six, sorry. Five, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. And that's it. Uh, it's in order. Okay, so that's it. You're going to get asked to either perform one of the sorts, or alternatively, you might get asked to have a look at a sort that's been done and tell, tell them which sort it was. So just look out for those different characteristics of each sort so you can identify them.